I promise you will also learn how to easily and seamlessly turn some, if not all, the challenges into lifelong habits. I encourage you to think of each and every month as an experiment in yourself, giving you the opportunity to explore how to be your best self every day going forward. Welcome to Philosopher Insights, the podcast that delivers wisdom in minutes a day that you can put into practice daily and strive to master over a lifetime. The podcast committed to sharing ideas that encourage you to bridge the gap between who you are today and the person you aspire to be in the future. Hi, my name is Herb Lamba and welcome to my podcast where I will share practical insights from the world's best authors. Knowledge isn't power, applied knowledge is. The quest to become the best version of you starts right now. Hi, and welcome to Philosopher Insights. My name is Herb Lamba. Today, we're going to discuss the self-care solution, a year of becoming happier, healthier, and fitter, one month at a time. The author of the book is Jennifer Ashton. This book is published in 2019. I want to share a number of my favorite insights from this book, starting with no alcohol, push-ups and planks, mindfulness, more steps, reduce technology, stretching, get some Z's, and finishing off with a challenge. So let's kick it off with the introduction. Quote, If you're wondering why these minor changes each month produce such definitive change, the answer is simple. The impact of what we do every day for basic health, what and how much we eat and don't eat, what and how much we drink, how much rest we get or don't get, how we move or don't move our bodies, has the potential to impact our overall health in a very positive or very detrimental way. That's because food, drink, sleep, and movement are all essential to our survival. And while these habits may have only a minor impact on our daily lives when taken in isolation, what we do and how we live each day adds up quickly, or even exponentially, when you push repeat week after week, month after month, and year after year. What this means is that if one aspect of your habits for essential health is lacking or even less than perfect, it can compound over time and end up interfering profoundly with your health and happiness, often without you knowing it. To that end, all the health habits I focused on last year weren't inconsequential. Every monthly challenge I included in this book has been objectively linked by reams of research to being critical to overall health and happiness." I pulled that from the introduction, and it encapsulates everything I've been focused on since completing the Optimized Coach program in 2019. I was drawn to the book by its title, The Self-Care Solution, as that is one of the primary areas of focus for me as I strive to be the best version of me possible. It's a quick reading, very insightful look at 12 new habits installed over a period of a year and the transformation that occurs by committing to them. Insight number one, give up alcohol. Quote, most people drink more than they realize. According to the recent research published in the journal Addiction, people who would be low-risk drinkers, that is, women and men who consume fewer than 10 and 15 drinks per week, respectively, underreport how much alcohol they have by an incredible 76%, effectively accounting for only one of four drinks they enjoy. End quote. I am not a huge alcohol drinker, but found this section fascinating. Most people who consider themselves casual drinkers don't realize how much alcohol they are consuming every week. Daily consumption of alcohol is tied to increased breast cancer risk, heart disease, poor sleep, skin problems, and weight gain. Quote, when you drink alcohol, your body quickly converts booze's simple carbs into sugar because there's no fat, protein, or fiber to slow that conversion down. This makes every alcoholic beverage you drink akin to consuming sugar packets, end quote. Just five ounces of wine contains 120 calories, and based on the size of the wine glasses today, you're likely drinking far more than five ounces per glass. One glass of wine a day equals 850 extra calories per week, which translates to 3,500 additional empty calories per month. Isn't it time for you to evaluate your alcohol consumption? I would urge you to consider doing a dry challenge for 30 days and appreciate the positive impacts it has on your life. Insight number two, push-ups and planks. Quote, on the very last day of the month, I woke up, had coffee, and turned on the shower per usual and did four minutes, five seconds of planking, followed by 
46 push-ups total. Badass. I just completed an intense five-minute workout I once thought I'd never be able to do. End quote. The day after I read her results, I started my daily push-up and plank journey. In one month, she more than doubled her push-ups and took her planks from 45 seconds to over four minutes. As I'm writing this, I am one week into the process, but excited to share my 30-day results. Quote, Resistance exercises like push-ups also stimulate the body's endocrine system to produce more growth hormone, which helps improve physical performance, increase fat loss, and even slows the physical aging process. End quote. Now let's turn to the plank. Quote, Planking also provides a full body workout, engaging a wide range of muscles in your arms, chest, legs, hips, lower back, and abs. In comparison, traditional crunches and sit-ups primarily work only your abs. End quote. Planks are anything but easy, but they are super effective in strengthening all areas of your abs, helping to alleviate back pain. The plank is considered a functional workout that provides the muscles, tendons, and ligaments with elasticity that makes you feel years younger. There is one exercise the author doesn't talk about that incorporates both a push-up and a plank, but adds the all-important squat as well. It's called the burpee. Add this to the plank and push-up challenge to take it to the next level. Burpees will engage every core muscle in the body and wipe you out fast. A great exercise. Insight number three, mindfulness practice. Quote, I still felt the daily benefits I did in the first week. I was more focused, positive, and productive. But now I felt my appetite was increasingly controlled with fewer cravings and impulsive decisions for unhealthy items. And while it may sound somewhat new age to some readers, after meditating for two weeks, I felt like I created this soft cushion between my heart, brain, and body and the harsh stress we all feel every day. End quote. That is how the author described her experience after just two weeks of meditation. She shares this bit of scientific evidence to support the importance of incorporating a meditation practice. Quote, According to a number of studies published recently by European researchers, regular meditation suppresses how inflammation is expressed on a genetic level. In other words, meditation practiced over time has the ability to reverse molecular damage on the body caused by inflammation and stress. End quote. If you want more reasons as to why you need to meditate, it's known to improve your mood, help you sleep better, support weight loss, and cut chronic pain by as much as 37%. How about this amazing insight from The Happiness Hypothesis, where author Jonathan Haidt says, quote, Suppose you read about a pill that you could take once a day to reduce anxiety and increase contentment. Would you take it? Suppose further that the pill has a great variety of side effects, all of them good, increased self-esteem, empathy, and trust. It even improves memory. Suppose, finally, that the pill is all natural and costs nothing. Now would you take it? The pill exists. It's called meditation. End quote. Would you take it? I think the answer is obvious. If you don't currently have a meditation routine in place, then this 30-day challenge is something to consider. Insight number four. More steps. Quote, How can walking help you lose weight? Quite simply, it helps your body burn more calories according to the American Council of Exercise. A 140-pound person burns 7.6 calories per minute when walking at a pace of 13.2 minutes per mile, or 228 calories for a 30-minute walk. Experts at ACE also say you can burn up to 3,500 calories per week, the equivalent of one pound of pure fat loss, simply by logging 10,000 steps per day. End quote. I have been walking a minimum of 10,000 steps for more than two years now, and it's one of the most rewarding experiences I've ever discovered. 10,000 steps equates to about 8 kilometers, or 1 hour and 40 minutes of walking, depending on your pace. What is essential to hitting this target is a device to track your steps. That alone will ensure you walk more than you currently do today, and schedule times where you plan to walk. Morning walks, lunch walks, family walks, however you choose to do it. Find a way to incorporate more walking in your day. Quote, Turns out taking more steps can help improve cognitive performance, researchers say, in part by increasing the flow of blood, oxygen, and nutrients to the brain. 
Regular walking also triggers the growth of new neurons and connections between brain cells while increasing the size of your brain's hippocampus, which controls memory, and preventing age-related tissue decline, end quote. Walking can actually make you smarter. One of the many benefits including a mood boost, mental clarity, weight management, stronger bones and muscles, and a healthier blood cholesterol. A quick research on the internet and I found that the average person clocks in at 4,961 steps per day, well below the recommended 10,000 steps per day. Let's shine the spotlight over to you. How many steps are you getting per day? What can you do to improve your numbers? Insight number five, reduce technology. Quote, I even keep my phone by my bed at night and check it as soon as I wake up. I stay on my phone while I'm getting ready in the car to GMA, even in the elevator up to the studio. I work on my phone through lunch in my medical office, sometimes even using my desktop computer and phone at the same time. I never seem to be able to walk to work or to the gym without texting, reading, or emailing. And when I get home, the phone is with me at the dinner table and even when I climb into bed. End quote. This is what inspired the author to consider being more mindful with her technology usage. And what I love about that passage is I think the majority of people today can resonate. Without a doubt, today we are facing a global technology addiction that is negatively impacting millions of lives by hijacking two of the most important human resources, attention and time. I love reflecting on this quote from Tristan Harris. Quote, The most important thing to acknowledge is that it's an unfair fight. On one side is a human being who's just trying to get on with her prefrontal cortex, which is millions of years old and in charge of regulating attention. That's up against a thousand engineers on the other side of the screen whose daily job is to break that and keep you scrolling on the infinite feed. End quote. It truly is an unfair fight when technology developers are purposely creating applications that feed our addiction. Technology addiction is a real condition that can lead to anxiety, depression, mood swings, social challenges, and memory problems. Quote, Several studies also show people are more likely to overeat and make unhealthier food choices when they're using phones or their technology, even just to text. Technology doesn't just affect what you eat, it also curtails how much you move. Those who are the most addicted to tech get the least exercise, studies show. End quote. The message here is very simple. Digital addiction is real, and it's in our best interest to start managing it. If you want to truly optimize your life, you need to stop engaging in those things that lead to suboptimal performance. And most people don't need to look much further than their daily technology usage as one of the key starting points to a happier, healthier life. Insight number six, stretching. Quote, While the act of stretching in itself was undoubtedly calming, the relaxation lasted nearly the entire day. It was similar to what I felt after a good deep massage, which would leave my mind and body in a state of zen for hours afterward. Without any physical tension in the muscles, I felt like I had less tension in my life, mentally and emotionally. Spending just a few minutes a day relaxing my muscles and working on my body's range of motion was having a significant impact on how I carried myself, how I felt about myself, and how I was able to handle stress. I couldn't think of a challenge with a greater return on investment. End quote. It's only been in the last couple years that I discovered the influence stretching has on your overall health. According to the science, Stretching is essential to keeping your muscles long and strong even if you're not working out. Quote, the mood benefits of a good stretch aren't limited to a quick dopamine hit. Studies show regular stretching helps to reduce stress, relieve anxiety, and even to reduce depression. In a similar way that yoga, meditation, and other mind-body activities can improve our mental and emotional health. End quote. One of the reasons I fell in love with daily stretching was how I felt when I was done. Once I completed my 15-minute stretching routine, I felt loose, energized, and totally refreshed. Plus, it's one of the easiest routines to add to any morning routine. Just be patient with stretching. It's not a magic pill where you will see the full benefits overnight. Do it consistently, and you will see results over time. Insight number seven. Get some Z's. Quote, one of the biggest wellness myths is that some people can sleep six hours or less per night and still function well and be healthy. Instead, 
Every single major medical organization in the country says we need to at least seven hours of sleep per night. Getting less raises the risk not only of poor mental performance, but also of high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, obesity, cancer, stroke, and mortality from all causes, according to the CDC. End quote. I recall the day in my coaching session in 2019 where I heard, quote, people that are sleep deprived have no idea they are sleep deprived, end quote. And looking back, that was a pivotal moment for my outlook on sleep. As I started to raise my sleep standards, I quickly discovered how much better I felt by going to bed just a little bit earlier. My entire morning routine benefited and my daily productivity saw dramatic improvements. Over the past two years, I've made sleep a priority, and now I go to bed a full 90 minutes earlier. Prioritizing my sleep has been one of the most influential changes I made to help optimize my health and my overall performance. Quote, Everyone knows a bad night's sleep will make you cranky and grumpy, but sleep's effect on mood goes beyond these surface symptoms of irritability. In fact, a 2017 study from researchers at Oxford Economics found the single biggest factor in living well, more important than money, sex, or even having an extensive support network, was sleep, end quote. Sleep is so important to your overall health and well-being that I would urge you to consider making it your number one self-care habit. How about this fictitious advertisement shared by Matthew Walker in Why We Sleep? Quote, Scientists have discovered a revolutionary new treatment that makes you live longer. It enhances your memory and makes you more creative. It makes you look more attractive. It keeps you slim and lowers food cravings. It protects you from cancer and dementia. It wards off colds and the flu. It lowers your risk of heart attacks and strokes, not to mention diabetes. You'll feel happier, less depressed, and less anxious. Are you interested? End quote. If you could package all those benefits into a bottle and sell it over the counter at your local pharmacy, you would make a fortune. The good news is, all those benefits are available to all of us for free. Just get more sleep. Insight number eight, up for the challenge. Quote, if you follow along with me for your own mindful year, I promise you will also learn how to easily and seamlessly turn some, if not all, the challenges into lifelong habits. I encourage you to think of each and every month as an experiment in yourself, giving you the opportunity to explore how to be your best self every day going forward, end quote. A quick summary of the 12 challenges that are captured in this book. One is the dry month, two, push-ups and planks, three, meditation, four, cardio, five, less meat, more plants, six, hydration, seven, get more steps, eight, mindful tech, nine, less sugar, 10, stretching, 11, sleep, 12, laughter. If you were to follow Jennifer Ashton's 12-month plan and improve in these areas of your life, imagine your life 365 days from today. It's broken down by months, so you install one new habit a month and continue to build from the previous month. It's genius and easy enough for anyone to follow. That concludes my quick look at this book, The Self-Care Solution by Jennifer Ashton. I'm excited to see where implementing one challenge per month will take me. And I hope you feel inspired to do the same. You've been listening to Philosopher Insights with your host, Herb Lambert. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To go deeper with me, you can register for free at www.philosopherinsights.com for instant access to a growing library of Philosopher Insights, which are 8 to 10 page PDFs plus 20-minute MP3s that break down my favorite insights from the world's best personal development books. To catch all the latest from me, you can follow me on Facebook at Optimal Herb. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.